All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're gonna to be talking about Goom Beam and this light right here. Now, if you can see on here, there's actually no markings on the side, on either side, but there is a giant logo on the bottom uh, for their company. Now, this is a company that I hadn't actually heard of in the past, but I believe it was George Washington, um, one of the subscribers that actually suggested me to you know kind of check out the company and just their products. Um, because he said they made some pretty decent light options for a good price. So I looked into it and sure enough, they do, um, at least on paper, you know, make what seems like a good product um, with good output and performance. And I kind of wanted to test them out because um, I enjoy cheaper options that give you, you know, really, I guess, a good value for your money. And so I contacted the company and just, you know, full disclosure here, they actually sent out um, this TLR1 kind of clone as well as a uh, Streamlight HLX clone. Um, it's their, this one's a short V1 as you can see there, and their longer rifle lights, the long uh, V2, I believe if I remember correctly, but or V1, I think, because they have a V1 and a V2 of each of them. And one is higher candela, and one is higher lumens. So they make two different models for each. So whichever you know intrigues you, that's what you go for. I have been extremely excited for the Surefire X300 Turbo that I got, and I've been using that for work. And it's honestly my favorite light, hands down, at the moment, um, including you know all of these, including the actual TLR1 HL. Um, the Surefire just blows them all out of water. And since I was kind of a fanboy for that. I wanted to check this out because a candela on this um, is anywhere, depending again on the numbers that you look at, it's somewhere between you know 40,000, 50,000, somewhere in that range. Um, I don't remember their exact specs online, but based on the performance of what it looks like compared to a Surefire, the turbo, I would say it's somewhere probably around 50,000 candela. I don't have a way to measure that, but that's just kind of to my eye what it looks like. It is 600 lumens, um, so it's not as bright you know, as say this one which is a thousand lumens now that said with this one most of those lumens all that light is actually just kind of outside flood and so you don't get to actually see the target um, that you're looking at as well with something like this at di especially a distance as you would something like this now in case you're wondering i actually ordered this to compare to that because i didn't know you know what i was getting honestly and i wanted to compare it to something that is chinese made versus something that's well i, I guess this is technically i don't remember if this is made in china but it's not made in the u.s um, streamlights are made overseas but I wanted to see an actual streamlight and compare it to it, and then I wanted to see a you know Chinese clone uh, to see if it's you know that's all it is with some modifications done to it, um, and then I could also just test this out at the same time. So this, in case you're wondering, is a not a streamlight TLR1. Uh, this sticker was actually on this side initially, but I tore it off so you can kind of see it. But this is just an eBay special. It's 40 bucks. It's a copy of the TLR1 HL. And honestly, performance-wise, it's almost as good. This is a thousand lumens. This is 800 lumens. Um, Performance-wise, they're not quite identical, but they're very, very close for the price difference. As long as this continues to hold up, which again, I'll make a review separate of this. Um, this would be an excellent choice if you're trying to save some money. You know, I still suggest you pay, you know, the high-end dollars and get stuff like Surefire for like your go-to gun. But for all your backups and secondaries that you just want a light on, um, so far this has been working fine. So I did also do slow motion test firing, which I'll show you at some point under these um, to show you whether or not they flicker. And I will say now that every single one of them flickered. This one flickered, this one flickered, that one flickered. Um, the Surefire did not flicker, but I was honestly surprised um, because they also, again, they sent out the rifle light version of, you know, basically the HLX. And it flickered on a recoil, but so did the Streamlight. Both Streamlights flickered, both Goombeans flickered. And when I say flicker, I mean, it flickered under slow-mo camera. Under regular speed camera, you couldn't see the flickering, and to the naked eye, you can't see flickering. So again, that might just be something that pretty much all, you know, budget quote-unquote options, maybe Olight does that too. I didn't have an Olight to test, but you know, maybe they do that too, I don't know. But the, the, uh, the Surefire is the only one that did not flicker under slow motion. So that kind of goes to, you know, get what you pay for. But again, to my naked eye, I couldn't notice any of these flickering um, whenever I actually had them on. So it's probably faster than my eye can actually see. And if you look closely on the slow-mo, which again, I'll show you uh, after this, um, like the, it flickered before the gun even had a ch chance to like the slide even go back all the way. So you'll kind of see it's just a momentary, like that initial ignition um, of the round is what made it flicker and it was just barely noticeable.
All right, so I have about 150 rounds through this uh, gun with this goon beam on here so far. I'm just gonna fire about 10 rounds through it in regular speed and then slow-mo and see if I can see if it flickers or not under recoil. So hopefully we'll be able to see this. Make sure, yep, okay. Now I'm going to be testing the TLR1HL. This is the one made by Streamlight. And as you can tell by the holster wear, I've had this one for a little while. Uh, we're going to see if this one, under slow-mo, will flicker when it's on. All right, here is the Surefire X300 Turbo. Again, just so you know, I'm not lying. This is an actual turbo, and you can see it does work, and it's probably gonna blind the camera to where you can't see it, but let's go and put it in slow-mo, and then I'll see if it flickers. All right, and last but not least, I have the, this is not a Streamlight, this is a eBay Chinese clone of the Streamlight. You can see they had a sticker on just like this on the other side, I peeled it off, but I left one sticker on there so there was no confusion as to which one was which. Hopefully you can see that it does in fact work. So when I saw the slow motion, I was like, oh man, well, these are gonna be flickering. And then whenever I tested this and saw it flickered, I was actually pleasantly surprised because again, um, that tells me that it's you know decent quality because these are decent quality when it comes to at least the battery connection springs and all that kind of stuff. Um, before I get into that, I will let you all know I'm going to be doing a giveaway once I get to, I believe I'm close to 4,000 subscribers at this point. And whenever that happens, um, I'll get some input from y'all, but I got some stuff that uh, K-Tactical actually uh, sent out to me. This is kind of their Surefire, um, their little small Surefire clones. And you can see there's a couple of these. There's some a whole bunch of just stickers and patches and just all kinds of just stuff. You know, if you like anime stuff, this will be right up your alley. Um, there's a little Picatinny rail sections, you know, just all kinds of little doodads and knickknacks. A uh, little knife, if you can see this. It's actually a little belt knife, which is actually pretty nice for what it is. Um, but just a little belt clip. You know, just small stuff like that. There's a couple pouches I might go throw in, but it's mostly patches, stickers, Picatinny rail sections, and those two main flashlights. So if you're interested in that, uh, be looking for the giveaway video that I'm going to be doing with that. And put your comments down below if you'd like to see just a whole bunch of smaller, um, I guess, winnings, for lack of better words. Or I can just do a couple that has more stuff in it. So... Um, put down your you know, comments or your thoughts on that. And again, there's a couple pouches that I might throw in there too, but I'm trying to keep it small because I don't want to pay a bunch for shipping. So if you're interested in that, you know, comment down below, let me know. But again, getting into this, I'm going to take this off this gun here in a second so I can show you it up close. But I wanted to compare it, again, 
to the actual streamlight and to the you know Chinese clone. So let me take this off and I'll show and it to you. If you are familiar um, with Chinese products, they almost always come in some sort of box that looks like that. Sorry, bumped the camera and hit me in the face. Or they come with this is again this is the TLR1 knockoff. Or they come in a box like this. So that's why I assume this goon beam is made in China, like most other things, including the actual streamlight. Um, that said, it's actually pretty good quality. Um, there are some small things that I'm nitpicking that I don't like about it. Like one is whenever you tighten this down all the way, this little piece right here is just ever so slightly loose. Um, it's again, it's not a massive deal, but it is. It is a thing. It's a little annoyance. And then also, assuming this will focus, there it goes. Also, this piece right here, if you are familiar with the actual one, you'll notice. On the real one, it kind of hangs over and it's flush up here, and then this kind of lip hangs off, so you can get a little, you know, purchase on there with your thumbnail. This one, again, it'll focus. There it goes. Um, does not, so you kind of have to peel it up right there. Again, that's not a big deal. But whenever I got this, this piece right here was actually more angled. Um, so I, I actually, if you see on here, the, the metal's kind of scraped. I took a pair of needle nose pliers and actually flattened this a little bit more because it was preventing it from sitting flush um, on the gun. All right, so again, you know, I just crushed that and now it's flush and now it fits perfectly fine. I don't know if that was just my specific example or if that was just a quality control issue or design, I have no idea. But even on the Chinese one, if you look on here, it actually goes all the way over and hangs over still. So that one doesn't have that problem. So is that a big deal? No, I literally fixed it with a pair of needle nose pliers, so that's not a big problem. It does come with all the little doodads and knickknacks for the rail adapters for right here. It's literally a TLR1 clone, so everything that this works with, this would work with. Um, the anodization that's normally on like the metal screws and everything is not. It's more of like a paint, so if you're familiar with like HKs, you know, that's kind of the same type of paint that they use there. It's probably cheaper, I don't really care. Um, the little gaskets on a real one are rubber. This one, they're almost a silicone. They're a little bit softer. Um, again, that's not a problem. I don't, I don't notice any issues with it. The batteries it comes with are actually rechargeable. Let me show you those real quick. So, the batteries on here are actually rechargeable. They're not CR123s. It will take CR123s, but it also uh, takes these batteries. I don't know what they are, <laughs> but um, they're essentially a, uh, a CR123, just rechargeable. I don't know if it'll take rechargeable CR123s. Those are kind of finicky, uh, just depending on what brand you use. I've had bad luck with rechargeable CR123s. Um, some stuff works with it, some stuff doesn't. One thing I also notice is whenever you're attaching the, uh, the battery tray, you really need to make sure that this bottom piece is connected and kind of uh, help out the lever. Otherwise, this will go on crooked. So again, small complaint, but it is a thing. So now let's talk about performance, because that's pretty much all the things I don't like about it. The switch, um, if you are familiar with the TLR1, it has momentary, and then it has um, constant on. The switch feels pretty much the same as a TLR1. It's not as tactile. Um, it's a little bit squishier, but I mean, it works just fine. The Chinese one, honestly, is actually a little bit stouter than both of them, but this one's probably my second favorite. This one's my favorite, but again, it's perfectly functional. Now, the thing I like about this light, and this is why I wanted to review it, because again, I'm a huge fan of Candela, and if you'll notice, um, if I put these side by side, the bezel or the head on this one is a little bit taller. So again, I don't know if they have someone else design this bezel, um, and then they screw it on, because a regular TLR1 has that weird little LED emitter in there that's like a reflector kind of thing, and I don't know if that makes that more Candela or less, but this one has significantly less Candela than this one does. Now the eBay special, again, kind of copies that same design. They use something similar. It's not the same as a TLR1, but it's it's similar uh, idea. And that kind of gives it a wider hotspot versus this one, if you look in there, sorry, it's coated in carbon because I've shot it a bunch. Let me clean it off a little bit so you can see it. All right, so inside there, that's a little bit better. <laughs> you can see how much I've shot it actually caked on. I should probably clean my stuff. But if you look down in there, you can see the emitter has that little kind of ring around it and then I don't know if you can tell on here, but you can kind of see how it reflects weird on the inside. That's because the bezel farther in is more narrow and then it gets wider. Kind of like the Surefire does if you're familiar with that. But versus this, it's pretty much just a, a more or less a funnel like you would see at Walmart, just consistent all the way down. Um, this one gives you a tighter beam pattern because of that. And now why that's important to me. Um, oh, one other distance or difference. Inside here, there's just a standard coil spring, not the weird honeycomb spring that's inside this one. So. Again, it's another way to save cost. So 
why that matters to me when it comes to the candela. So I'll show you some pictures here of what it looked like in a room looking into a classroom with a mannequin um, off in the distance and I have one of my other flashlights. It's like set on a 200 lumen mode kind of shining out at you in the hallway and the hallway's lit, the classroom's dark, but you have a flashlight shining at you. So basically it's every type of photonic barrier that exists all in one photo. And this light does the worst, this light does the next best, and then the, the Surefire Turbo does the best. And it's because this one does not have enough focus, and so whenever you're shining it on something like up close, you know, it looks super bright because the beam's wide, and so if you're just in a, you know, a bedroom or maybe even a small classroom or something like that, uh, or a small house or living room, whatever, um, this is going to seem like it gives you better situational awareness, and it does to some degree because it has more spill or more flood. This one, though, allows you to actually see through things. So again, if you're searching for somebody or you have identified somebody and you want to see what they're doing, what they're holding, you know, actually identify something on them or see somebody at farther distances, this is the way to go. And it still has a good amount of flood. It's just not as bright. I would say kind of the outer beam is, you know, maybe around 200 lumens, something like that, versus this one, you're probably getting around, you know, 500 lumens of, you know, flood. Um, and then the rest of that's focused in the center versus the majority of the lumens on this one are focused in that tight beam, which you can kind of see there. So you still get some spill, as you can see, but that beam is significantly brighter versus this one. You can see all it goes all the way over here and it's just kind of wasted. And also why that matters is go through your house sometime, especially if you have something like this. Um, if you have a good comparison between like, you know, the Surefire Turbo or something like this in comparison with this, take a very floody light and then take a high candela light and go clear your house. Um, and the where you want to look specifically is if you're standing on the inside of a doorway, stand, you know, five, six, ten feet away from the door shine your light out into the hallway or into the room or whatever it's looking into and you'll notice tons of that light is wasted on the wall where that door frame is instead of into the room you're trying to see and it does a couple things one it's going to backsplash um, light back onto you and then two it's going to waste all of that light to where you're now illuminating the wall which is kind of half blind in you which is not going to let you see what's in the room better because again that's wasted light Versus something like this, all of, you know, that door frame, if it's, you know, the door frame's here, this light is, the majority of it's actually going through into where you want to see. And again, you'll see that picture, how much difference the high candela makes. Here is a TLR1 HL. My shed is, you know, you, you know about this. This is probably about 20, 25 yards away at the most. Airplane flying over right now, and then the tree line is probably about 30 yards, just another five, you know, maybe 10 past that once you get into the trees. So that'll give you kind of a good idea of how well the TLR1 HL works. Again, it's a thousand lumens, stay up close, pretty wide flood, and it's good to see. I mean, in pure darkness like this, I could see what was in somebody's hand in my yard up to that fence, which is about 15 20 yards. That's about its maximum, you know, effectiveness. Now you could argue that's as far as you need to see. Uh, I would love it if this thing would focus. There it goes. You could argue that's about as far as it needs to actually, you know, identify someone because that's about as far as you can take a shot with a pistol. But I like being able to take shots farther than that. So there's that. And here is the goon beam. Now you can tell, obviously, it is a much smaller um, beam pattern because it has more candela. Now you can see the. I don't know if you see my finger right here. Right about here is the edge. You can see it moving about here with it. Yeah, right there. You can see right in the center of the, the screen. So that's the pattern to where I can see. And it lights up everything, probably about 100, maybe 200 lumen flashlight would, you know, in that, in that pattern right there. But again, now I'll show you these side by side. So obviously more flood over here. So if you're just doing worried about CQB and whatever range is, you know, pistol ranges, this will serve you fine, but just know that if you need to look at someone's hand specifically, you can tell you'll actually be able to illuminate, you know, what they're holding. So if you're a Candela believer, this one is for you. If you're not, this one will still work well, just not as well as this is identifying. And those other pictures I show you indoors with photonic barriers or when you have partial light um, will really show um, the difference between the two. Because again, in pure darkness, they both look fantastic. I mean, it's not a big deal, but you really can't tell until you uh, 
start paying attention to all those other factors that weigh in. All right, here is the Surefire X300 Turbo. As you can tell, I'll focus it on here. This one has a little bit more focused of flood. And now here's the Goon Beam over here. A little bit wider, not by a lot, but enough to tell. So the Goon Beam actually gives you a little bit more situational awareness. But the Surefire has a brighter, more intense hotspot. It's 650 lumen, lumens, 666 candela. This one is 40,000 to 60,000, somewhere in that range. So let's just call it 50, um, which according to what I'm seeing right now, I would say 50 is probably accurate. Um, that just kind of shows you what it looks like against the shed. Here's the beam pattern. You can tell on the, uh, the Goon Beam, it looks actually perfectly centered right here from what I'm seeing. Um, it's not if you shine against the wall, but you can see the hot spots a little bit more intense on the on the Surefire, which is on the right. Now the Goon Beam is a little bit bluer or whiter, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but comparing the two, honestly, right now, um, there's not a whole lot of noticeable difference. So one thing that I wasn't thrilled about, but I'm more okay with it now is the price of this. So this comes in at pretty much the same price as a Streamlight does. And again, I've put probably... I put about 400 rounds uh, with, through my Glock 17 with this on it so far. About 150 was one of my friends uh, shooting, and then I put about another 250 uh, through there. And the only issue I had is whenever I tightened it with my thumbnails, you know, with just my thumb, it came loose on me just a little bit. It never came off the gun, but I noticed it came a little bit loose. And so whenever you put it on there, just make sure it's on good and tight. And I used a penny or something, just give it a little extra turn. And ever since I did that, I never had to come off uh, for the last 250 rounds. So again, just make sure it's tight. Again, it does come with uh, rechargeable batteries, and it comes with a little recharger. Uh, a recharger. It comes with a charger for those. The only bad thing about this is you can only charge one at a time, so that's kind of obnoxious. Um, but here's the box it comes with, in case you're curious. Um, and again, it comes with all the little doodads. Um, so that's a little upgrade. You can also use CR123 batteries if you don't like rechargeables, but that is a nice touch. So to me, you know, those things are the rechargeable batteries are usually somewhere between 15, 25 bucks. So I think. In reality, you're only paying about $100 for this, and for the performance you're getting, it's a third of the price of a Surefire X300 Turbo. And performance-wise, I'd say it's about nine, eh, 80 to 90% as good as the Surefire. Now, again, it's not going to be made as well. The Surefire is just going to be built like a tank, and the Surefire has better all-around performance in this. But that said... This Goon Beam has a much better performance uh, than the TLR1HL. Now, this used to be my go-to light, you know, because it was the nicest light I had, and it had really good, and it has pretty good candela again for what it is and for when it was made. But now, this stuff like the Surefire, the you know, um, oh, what is it, uh, Mod Light, and all the other companies that are out there, this pretty much is up there with them in terms of performance. And again, I'll do a review on their rifle light as well. Um, but if you are looking to only spend about 100 to 150 bucks, I would get this Goon Beam over the actual Streamlight. I know that's you know sacrilegious. You're not allowed to say you know something's better than a well-proven brand. But I will say this is going on um, my home defense gun uh, because it. I trust it now at this point. I've shot it enough, and if it breaks or something in the future, I'll let you know. Um, but I don't think it's gonna. But the performance is better. Also on you know Hydex holsters, things like this, um, this still works in there just fine if it's made for the TLR one. Because again, it's such a minuscule amount of difference. Um, it should fit on most lights, especially a duty light. Now I will say I personally wouldn't use these either of these for duty. I would buy a, a Surefire if you're going you know if you're a cop or something or you're doing this for a living. But um, as a you know home defense or as a you know in case of emergency break glass gun i think these would be perfectly fine and again this one gives you far better performance so if you guys have any questions or you appreciate this kind of review um you know give me a thumbs up that helps the channel quite a bit um i try to review stuff that i think is a good value i'm not just gonna review stuff just to sell it to you because i don't care if you buy this or not um i don't make any money based on this video other than the fact that they gave me two free likes so hopefully so. that gives you kind of a good idea of what my experience has been with this and again i am going to use this for my home defense because it is just that much uh better in my opinion than the tlr one now don't get me wrong this is still a good solid light i just am on the candela bandwagon right now because it just really allows you to just punch through photonic barriers smoke fog you know tinted windows stuff like that where you can actually see what's going on but anyways hopefully you appreciate this and i hope you all have a good one